Hi everyone, I'm Alessandro, welcome back to Mr. Wizard Art and today we are exploring one of the art fundamentals which is perspective. So leave a like, subscribe and let's go! Alright, so before I jump to the computer and show you some stuff, uh, there are some important things that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is what actually is perspective. So from an artistic point of view, uh, perspective is the art of representing our uh, 3D world on a 2D plane uh, which is being viewed from a certain angle, from a certain point of view. So for example, if you're drawing a scene with uh, lots of elements, uh, perspective is going to deal with uh, the placement of all of those uh, elements in relationship to each other and all of the effects of uh, foreshortening, for example. Uh, so uh, I have my pencil, my pencil here, so if I get it closer to you or closer to the camera, you see that it, it gets bigger. And if I take it back, you see that it gets smaller. So it's not an actual uh, physical change in size, it's an apparent uh, change in size. So perspective uh, deals with that. So basically perspective is the art of representing uh, the 3D world on a 2D plane. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about is that our vision is actually really complex. We see things in a curvilinear stereoscopic perspective. At the end of this video uh, I'll show an example of curvilinear perspective and there's a reason for that. But I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to step uh, into that uh, subject because in this video I want to cover the basic, uh, the basics. So we need to know about the basics before uh, going to something more uh, complex uh, like that. And the uh, third thing is, if you're studying uh, form and space, you need to know about, about perspective. So form and space are basically important uh, for you to draw anything, uh, like characters, scenarios, uh, uh, objects, uh, vehicles, uh, whatever. I made a video about that. You can check it out on the link uh, that's going to be uh, above here. And uh, that's it. Uh, now let's jump to the computer that I'm going to show you some cool stuff. So let's go. Okay, so here we are in Blender, which is a 3D software. And there's something really interesting that I want to show you here. And the thing is, here we have a cube. Uh, actually, it's an orthographic uh, projection of a cube. And the thing is, we don't have perspective here because it's an orthographic projection so how do I know that only by looking at it so the thing is we have uh, three axes uh, here so we have the X axis we have the Y axis which follow the follows the green line and we have the Z axis which is uh, the vertical one so if I increase the size of this cube like this now you can see that uh, the edges of this form, they are always following one of these uh, three axes. So let's uh, look at the three edges that we can see here that follow the X direction, the X axis. So you can see that this line, this line and this other one right here, these three, they are parallel to each other. So in our vision, it means that they, they're always keeping uh, the same distance from each other. So they'll never uh, meet somewhere, they'll, they'll never get closer uh, somewhere or uh, uh, further apart. So the thing is that in our vision, uh, things w uh, are not going to get smaller uh, the, f the further away they get from us and they're not going to get bigger if they, if they get closer uh, to us. So let's apply perspective to it right now. So now we can see that this part of uh, the form is bigger than that other side over there. And the thing is, these three lines, they are not parallel anymore. I mean, in space, in real life, if you take a measurement, you'll see that they are parallel. But we're talking about, the, about perspective, the way that we perceive things. So we can see that this side is smaller and these lines are not parallel anymore. So what happens if I keep increasing the size of these of these fo uh, this form? So you can see that the lines here they're starting to get closer to each other. And if I keep increasing it, 
this, you'll see that they'll reach a point, they'll kind of, let's say, touch uh, at one point uh, at a long distance uh, far away. So the thing is, all of the lines that follow uh, the direction of the, these three lines, they are pointing to this little point right here. So this is called a vanishing point, because the closer you get to it, the smaller things uh, will be. So actually a vanishing point is a point located at an infinite, an infinite uh, uh, distance away from the viewer. So the thing is, and another example that, that I can show you, if I have my cube right here, I can uh, uh, change its placement. So I'll change its placement along the X direction. So it, it is going to follow that vanishing point. So if I do that like this, you'll see that it is getting closer to the vanishing point which is the same point that we had before. So I'm going to increase its size again, like this. And you see here we had our cube, but uh, the lines, uh, the, uh, the edges that that uh, uh, were pointing to this direction, they were pointing to this vanishing point. So that's how we perceive things getting smaller in space. So, and this, this effect, of course, uh, it happens uh, in all of the directions, in all of the axes of, of space, not just this one. And another thing that I want to show you here, now that we've seen uh, this form in perspective, I'm going to activate the orthographic uh, proje uh, projection of this form, so you can see how weird it is something without uh, perspective. Now we have the same form, but without perspective. So, as we are used to um, live in a universe uh, where we perceive things in perspective, now it seems that this object has a big butt right there and a small head right here. It seems that it gets bigger um, in size from, from this uh, point to this point. But the thing is, it's just we have parallel lines and the object is actually uh, here on the screen this side has actually the same size as this side right here but because of perspective the way that we perceive things it seems like this side is bigger than this one so let's get back again to perspective now things look uh, a lot more real and now let's jump to uh, the other software where I can show you that and explain that a little bit better uh, with uh, some drawings that I made. Let's go! Alright, so here we have Mr. Nice Hat and we have also two boxes. So one box is just above his eye level, which is represented by this horizontal line, and the other box is just below it. So the thing is, these boxes, they are not tilted in any way, they are not uh, rotated in any way, they are just like they would be if they were uh, on the ground. So let's imagine that they get, they, they got there just like an elevator. One uh, just went up above his eye level and the other one just stayed a little bit below. Now let's see uh, what Mr. Nice Hat is actually seeing. In this image we can see another horizontal line with an eye right in the middle. So this line is called the horizon line. The horizon line is your line of sight at your eye level. So let's take the boxes, uh, for example. We can see the bottom of the one that's just above the horizon line and we can see the top of the one which is just below. So the horizon line is really good uh, for the placement of, your, of the objects that are going to be in your scene and also to start applying perspective. But remember, the, these two boxes, they are not uh, tilted or uh, rotated. Uh, if you do that, you, could, you can also do that to your horizon line. But I'll explain that maybe in another video, because I want to keep things more simple in this one. So in this image, we have what we call a one-point perspective. So I've got my horizon line and a vanishing point right in the middle. And you can see that there are radial uh, lines coming out of the vanishing point and the thing is these uh, three cubes they are facing 
that vanishing point. So I can use these radial lines as guidelines to draw the edges of the cube to help me create uh, the perspective, um, just like we saw in Blender. You can see that the box which is above the horizon line, we are able to see its bottom, and the two boxes that are below the horizon line, we are able to see their tops. And one thing about the box on the left is that I drew uh, its internal structure as if it were uh, transparent. So uh, that's just to show you that uh, the perspective, uh, the way that we apply perspective, can be applied to every part of the box, even if you don't see them. There's one thing that I don't like about one point perspective, and maybe you cannot see that now, but you'll see when we start talking about two point perspective. And the thing is, you have some of the edges of the boxes following a perspective, so they are in perspective, but you have other edges of the box, the boxes which are not in perspective, and that kind that creates kind of a distortion. So now let's go to two point perspective, and I think you'll see that better. So here we have a two-point perspective and as you can already see it's a lot better and it has a lot more depth than the one-point perspective. So the thing is we have one vanishing point on the right and another one on the left uh, on the horizon line. And all of the boxes here they are facing uh, with one of their sides one vanishing point and with another side the other vanishing point. So all of their uh, edges, all of their lines, they are actually in perspective, except for the vertical ones. But even though we can already see that we have a lot more depth uh, in this image. One thing that I wanted to notice is that it's easier to see the top and bottom of boxes which are further away from the horizon line. So that's the case for the box on the top left and the other one on the bottom right. And the other thing is uh, we cannot see the top and bottom of two boxes here. The one on the right, which is being cut uh, at half by the, by the horizon line. So we are seeing the, the front plane and, the, and its side plane. And the other one on the left, which is just sitting above the horizon line. So in this case, uh, we are almost seeing its bottom. So that's the limit between, between seeing and not seeing uh, the bottom of the box. So now here we have a three point perspective. So the thing that I did, I just added a third point uh, down below, as you can see. And the change that happens from uh, the two point perspective to this one is that the lines which were vertical before, now they are also in perspective. One thing that you can see is that the box on the left and the one on the right, they feel kind of stretched out and kind of distorted. But what is happening here is that they are getting too close to the vanishing points. So one thing that you can do uh, when you're drawing uh, to get an effect similar to the box in the middle that seems more uh, uh, less uh, dynamic actually, you can always, when you're drawing, put your vanishing points out of the paper or the screen where you're drawing. They actually don't need to be inside uh, the area of your uh, drawing and painting. The placement of the vanishing points uh, depend actually on how you want to show your scene. If you want to create something, something more dynamic, you could use uh, vanishing points uh, closer to each other, just like we have here. Uh, if not, if you want to show something more stable, more uh, calm, you could uh, just make them uh, f uh, further away from each other. So the thing is, uh, for example, uh, this box on the right, I, I could use that kind of dynamic uh, positioning to uh, create a vision from uh, top to bottom of a really high building or something like that. But now there's actually a problem with three-point perspective that doesn't happen in a two-point perspective and we'll see that in the next image. And the problem is how do I solve the perspective uh, of an object, uh, in this case a box which is located above and below the horizon line at the same time? Well, you can see that this uh, thing here just doesn't look right. It seems like a cartoon. So what happens if I put another vanishing point above uh, the horizon line. 
Well, I did that and as you can see it doesn't solve the problem. Uh, everything just became uh, weird. It seems like more like a mirror or something like that. So the thing is uh, the three point uh, perspective just doesn't work anymore uh, for this case. What we have to do now is actually start to apply a curvilinear perspective. Alright, so here I drew uh, these two objects uh, using a, a curvilinear perspective. It's not that precise actually, it's just to show you, uh, just to give you an idea of how it works. You can see that I can draw uh, the, the bigger object in using the two hemispheres uh, of the horizon line, above and below, and there's another smaller object uh, just above it. And this topic is actually uh, more complex, so maybe I can talk about uh, this one in another video. Alright, so that was a quick explanation about perspective. Um, I know it can be sometimes really difficult and it requires lots of training and observation. I'm thinking about uh, making other videos about this subject in the future maybe, uh, exploring uh, a little bit more some complex uh, types of, of perspective and uh, how to use perspective, show some examples uh, like tilting uh, the horizon line and finding the center of an object in perspective and drawing other uh, stuff maybe. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful, if you have any questions or suggestions remember to comment down below, I'll try to answer them. And that's it, remember to leave a like, to subscribe to the channel, to follow me on Instagram at mister.weasel.art and also to check out my other videos, I think you might like them. So that's it for today, see you next time, bye!